chapter 4 records a story in which Jesus has an encounter with a woman who is a Samaritan at a well. And in this story, uh, the scriptures record that Jesus and his disciples had been traveling throughout most of the day. It was the heat of the day, and they came upon this Samaritan city. And Jesus sends his disciples on into the city to get some food for them uh, and for him. And he takes a place by this well, which is about a half mile distance from the city, to rest uh, and to get something to drink. He doesn't withdraw a drink from the well because he doesn't have the, the, the tool that he needs to do so, a bucket and some rope, I, I suppose. And so a woman walks out from the city and she is approaching the well with, a, with, with what she needs to draw the water out and Jesus asks her for a drink. And so they begin this conversation in which Jesus uh, and this Samaritan woman are talking about the water uh, from the well at one moment and then at another moment they begin to talk about a different kind of water. Let me read this exchange to you from the scriptures. And in verse 11 from chapter four, she says to the woman, sir, you have nothing to draw from and this well is deep. Where do you get that living water? You see, Jesus had talked to her for a moment about a, a physical drink of water that he wanted because he was thirsty. And then they began to have this conversation about water and Jesus turns the conversation to the topic of, of living water. And so now Jesus is talking about something spiritual. He's talking about not something that will quench a physical thirst, but something that will quench a, a spiritual thirst, a, a deep thirst in, in this woman's heart. And so she's full of questions. She doesn't understand uh, where Jesus is going to get this living water from. She's interested, but she doesn't understand where it's going to come from. And she wants to know how this is going to take place. Where do you get that water? And you don't even have anything to withdraw it from. But this is what Jesus says in verse 13. He says, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. Now he's referring to the water from that physical well that he is resting by. She's come out about a half a mile from the city to, to, to draw some well water and carry it back to her home for cooking or whatever she's going to use it for. And Jesus says, everyone who drinks of that kind of water from this physical well will get thirsty again. But then he says, but whoever drinks of the water that I give them will never thirst. But the water that I give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. And so there's this conversation, fascinating conversation that takes place between the Samaritan woman and Jesus beside a well. She is confused because the only thing that she can think about in that moment, and her life is wrapped up around her physical needs, and she thinks that Jesus is talking about physical needs, the need for water, to drink. But Jesus recognizes a deeper need that she has. Now, there's so many things in this story, this account from John 4 that we could talk about, but this particular aspect of this story is the fact that Jesus looked deeper into this woman's life than even she was able to look at that moment and recognize the fact that she did not have a deep need for that physical water from the well, but the deepest need that she had was for spiritual water, for, for living water. Perhaps you are listening to this story today from the life of Christ and you can relate to the woman who has visited this well and had this life-changing encounter with Jesus. Perhaps today, as you listen to this video clip, your heart is full of physical concerns and the needs that you have, the worries of day-to-day -day life, and, and just what you need is a surprise encounter with Jesus where He changes the subject completely on you. And He takes your focus and attention off of your physical needs and he begins to speak to your heart about living water, about a spiritual need that we all have deep down inside of us and how he can offer it to us. Now we may wonder how in the world is Jesus going to meet these sorts of needs? As we look, uh, we may not immediately be able to see how he can solve this problem. This woman who was fixated on her physical need for water was looking at Jesus and saying, Sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw from the well. But Jesus was pulling her attention back to the fact that he was offering her something for her heart 
And even though she wasn't able to physically see how Jesus could meet that need, it didn't take away from the fact that he was fully capable of being able to meet that need. You may not be able to see today how Jesus can meet the needs of your heart, but he can and he will. And Jesus says that he will give you something that will quench your spiritual thirst in a way that you'll never be thirsty again. It'll meet a need that your heart has and that need will never, never rise up and nag and pull at you again. Perhaps today your heart resonates with that message and you can hear those words of Jesus by that well all those years ago and that promise and that hope of, of spiritual satisfaction, living water that will quench that, that spiritual thirst that we all know and we all feel from time to time. Would you let today be the day that you allow Jesus to meet that need in your life, that you recognize the fact that there is a, a, a spiritual need in your life, a thirst that you cannot meet yourself, that you have no, you might have all the rope and buckets in the world and you could stand by the best well in the world, but you can never meet that physical, that spiritual need in your heart. But Jesus can do it. Would you let Jesus meet that need for you today just by turning to Him, just by praying to Him, just by asking Jesus to come into your heart and life and become the Lord of it.